right, let's get right into it. Um, so today we're going to cover uh, patrol rifles. Um, there's a lot of videos out there from former military guys, uh, current military guys, kind of covering uh, what kind of rifle and setup they used overseas. I think that the uh, rules of engagement are a little bit different for law enforcement guys. I think that uh, from a mission standpoint, uh, on the domestic side, it's a little bit different. Uh, so with that being a little bit different, we're going to use a little bit different setup. Uh, the cool thing is, is a lot of the stuff that I use uh, is a lot of the stuff that they have on their setups. I just kind of tweaked it for what was best for law enforcement. And I'm not saying that my setup's the best setup or anything like that, because there's plenty of setups you can use um, to get the job done. But ultimately, what I was thinking about was um, warrants on houses, um, active shooter scenarios, uh, undercover, low vis visibility operations, um, just different missions throughout a law enforcement standpoint um, plays into what patrol rifle you're going to use. Uh, fortunately enough for me, I am kind of a dual role guy. I'm assigned to narcotics, have a canine. Uh, I also execute warrants. I do the whole nine yards. I may fill in on shift. It just depends on what day it is. So with that being said, I kind of have uh, different patrol rifle setups. Uh, I got my long rifle here and then a short pistol, I should say. Um, with that being said, let's get into my main patrol rifle. Um, we'll kind of go from the front to the back. Um, so on top here, I have a Hydra mount um, with a red dot and some type of peck. Uh, this is not an actual peck. Um, it does fine for what I need it to do. Uh, it has IR light, uh, IR laser, viz light, white light, um, and then also a visible uh, laser. Um, I like the Hydra mount. The Hydra mount's really sweet um, for being able to pick that rifle up and be able to see, ultimately, be able to pick up that red dot real quick. So I can snap it up real quick and get that picture of that red dot. Ultimately, I'm a lefty. So you got to think lefty uh, brains whenever you are building a rifle for a left-handed guy. Um, I have ambi controls on everything um, because the, reasons I, uh, the reason I like ambi controls for law enforcement is because uh, whether we like to admit it or not, we, we're very uh, unprepared. And, uh, so I have guys that show up and they're like, hey, man, I forgot my rifle. You got an extra one? Uh, yeah, absolutely, I do. Uh, I know it's a bad thought, but it happens. Uh, so I have completely ambi controls uh, with anti walk pins and uh, an, an ambi 45 degree throw safety. I like the 45 degree throw because it just allows me to shoot just that much faster. Um, I have a Radian Raptor charging handle. Uh, I like, I've always ran a uh, ambi control uh, charging handle just because. Ultimately, if I need to, if I lose control of this arm, I can ultimately rack this rifle if I need to, um, or whatever. If I lose my left arm, I can switch over to my right arm and still effectively stay in the fight, which is pretty cool um, from a standpoint of staying in the fight, regardless of what it is. This is a pretty Gucci rifle. Uh, you definitely don't need something this Gucci to get the job done. There's plenty of setups out there that get the job done. Um, but this is ultimately the setup that I like. It's a 13 and seven pendant welded, uh, muzzle brake underneath this Ford blast can, um, is a three port muzzle brake. And then we got a Ford blast can. Um, I run a Ford blast can on every rifle, um, for patrol. And the reason being is because if you've never had the percussion of a rifle shot next to your head, um, especially in, you know, CQB or whatever it is going through a house, it can ultimately, it can damage your ears. Whether we're wearing ear pro or not, we want to think about the percussion on our eardrums. And it's not only about staying in the fight and also um, staying alive, but as well as we got to think of longevity uh, as far as our health is concerned. 
and that's extremely important. Hearing is extremely important. I got a pretty wide muzzle. I got a pretty wide hand guard on here um, with a hand stop. I like the hand stop because I can prop myself up against a wall if I need to. I can prop myself up against the hood of a car if I need to hold, you know, perimeter for a long period of time. Um, I have 45 degree iron sights on here. So that way, if my red dot goes down, I can quickly transition. Um, I will say it takes a little getting used to from getting this laxy daisy heads up position with the hydra mount that allows you to get to moving over to the iron sights. But remember, iron sights are for the last resort. Um, on all on all of our rifles, uh, we decided that you know having a different mission set. Uh, that we're not always wearing a uniform. We're not always uh, necessarily going to have the most ammo on us. We wanted to be able to keep two magazines on the gun. Um, and with that, we found a company that allows us to do that uh, with the pistol storage device. Uh, we can keep an extra 20 round magazine in here. Doesn't push it out. Doesn't make it look real funky. And ultimately, it now it gives us just that a little bit more ammo um, in, a, in a situation where you have an active shooter come out, you're in plain clothes, uh, stuff hits the fan. Oh man, my freaking play carrier or my external carrier ain't set up uh, for an active shooter. Oh well, tough ditty, you gotta get to it. So ultimately, now I don't have to have to worry really about that. I have two magazines on the gun. So if I go into something now, I have uh, 50 rounds uh, to get the job done. Um, on the other side here, Running a skeleton uh, hand grip, not anything really specific. Uh, this was a demo rifle for my company, so of course making it look pretty. I'm into uh, texturized or extremely heavy stippling on uh, hand grips uh, because you're not always wearing gloves. Things are raining. Um, you know, if things start getting slick. You definitely want to make sure that you can hold onto the rifle and still stay effective. Uh, we have paracord here. So these are our attachments for our uh, proprietary sling we make. Um, and this ultimately just allows you to move around. Uh, if we're doing some kind of reconnaissance or something like that on an op, or we need to you know, be able to sneak up to a house before we execute a warrant, we want to make sure we stay quiet. We don't want all that stuff jingling around and jangling. And, you know, jingle jangles ain't that fun. So ultimately... Uh, we want to make sure we stay quiet. We have enhanced parts kits. We have anti-walk pins. Um, all this is from Strike Industries. We're using a pretty specific trigger here, uh, just to show the gun is clear and safe. This is a three and a half pound trigger, which is the national standard for law enforcement. Uh, just makes for running the gun so much nicer and so much smoother and getting rounds down range much faster. Um, the peck, the peck here, not much really to write home about. Um, I wouldn't even, I guess you couldn't call it a, a peck because it's really not a peck. It's a light laser combo, uh, but it's got a thousand lumen light um, with a laser incorporated onto it. I like that because shooting from the hips, CQB coming in underneath, uh, coming from high port, whatever the case may be, we can still use our laser uh, as a secondary pointing mechanism. Uh, so that pretty much covers that part of it. Um, have your, have your rifle set up for what you, what your mission dictates. Uh, I've went through now, fortunately enough, I've went through hundreds of doorways, uh, on warrants. Uh, I've done a lot of different cool missions. So I found that my mission dictates this setup. Uh, I've changed it over the years. I've changed all kinds of different things. Um, most of your patrol rifles that are issued out by agencies are high garbage. Uh, and if it doesn't have uh, some type of white light and some type of optic on it, I wouldn't suggest running it. Uh, just simply because we want to be as eff effective as possible if we need to use that rifle. And we can't be effective uh, if we don't have a white light, a sling, and a red dot or some type of optic on it. Uh, I've seen agencies issue out uh, rifles with no light, no light, no sling, no optic, and just iron iron sights and get to it, fell. Well, unfortunately, that's not really 
the most optimal in a gunfight. So we have to make sure that we stay optimal in gunfights. Uh, here we have my little shorty here. Like I said, I have a different I have different setups for different capabilities and different missions. Um, my little shorty is for when we do like undercover uh, deals, we do uh, some type of protection detail or whatever the case may be, um, or just having a backpack gun while you're out at a, a parade or a fair, or maybe you're assigned to detectives and you know DNA kits and all that other crap doesn't a lot for you to have a huge rifle having something small like this is extremely vital uh it's a nine millimeter which hey it gets the job done um ultimately i put another hydra mount on this one just because training with the hydra i'm so used to using a hydra we i have i'm using a fox drop mic lower uh, what this allows me to do is the gun goes dry i can ultimately change magazines here and still stow away my other magazine in the hand grip and it gives you that positive it gives you that positive click into the hand grip here um, again allows you to keep two mags on the gun at all times because if you're in plain clothes you definitely ain't gonna have your shit set squared away um, for you know um, the worst case scenario but unfortunately you may have to respond to the worst case scenario uh, if you're in plain clothes I got a folding fold brace um, I have, again, our QDs for our, with paracord for our sling, um, another light laser combo, uh, what this does, what this one is extremely vital though, it puts the light and laser up so that I can still get that good C clamp into the gun. Um, and then also too, if I need to shoot from the hip, I have that laser here to be able to guide me to do so. But then also I have a, just a little vortex venom uh, on top of the gun. This is a side charging upper. Uh, this is pretty cool because no matter if I need to run it here or because I'm lefty, I need to run it underneath like an AK, I can do that. Um, again, completely ambidextrous. Uh, forward blast scan on this one, of course, just because, like I said, that matters not a millimeter. Doesn't matter that it may pop out of the book sack only, you know, once a year or something like that. Ultimately, that forward blast can uh, makes or breaks a gun. Um, pull over some of these other ones we have here. We have, this would be something that we would typically give somebody if they came to me and asked for a standard patrol rifle. It's got a red dot. It's got white light. Uh, Ambi controls again. Um, and MOE furniture, we Cerakoted this one to match, uh, Cerakoted the handguard to match the furniture from MOE. Um, but this is pretty much your basic uh, setup for, patrol, for a patrol rifle. And this is kind of what I would expect somebody to carry if they were, you know, working with me or whatever, having some type of uh, fully ready rifle that can handle the mi mission putting forth. Uh, only difference is typically this was not made for a law enforcement guy, um, but I would add a forward blast can. That would be the only thing. Um, and this would be a pretty standard one. Uh, ambi controls again. Um, this is it, man. This is your basic, it's your basic rifle. You don't need nothing. You don't need nothing Gucci with a hydra mount and all that, all that Gucci stuff until you really get into guns. That's kind of what we stand by at our company is we'd rather build you a pretty budget rifle and uh, get you out on the range and shoot. Uh, then you go out and buy something like this, buy something that's seriously expensive, and uh, now you can't afford ammo to go shoot because then you just created a whole different set of problems for yourself. Um, but I just wanted to kind of cover patrol rifles and uh, how they integrate in with... Uh, law enforcement uh, because again this is my setups but this setup may not be for you uh if you are you know whatever the case may be man i don't know a bike patrol guy or whatever i'm i don't work for a big agency so i'm not really sure what the big agencies have uh but one of these rifles will pretty much get the mission done for whatever it is uh that you need to get done throughout the day so if you all have any questions 
feel free to reach out on our Instagram, Facebook, uh, at HC Tactical LA, uh, and give us a follow. Give us and hit that subscribe button.